Hi guys, welcome to another edition of All Things Football. We've got a lot to talk about, so we're having a special um, guest with us today. He's a good friend of mine. His name is Ziad Parker, an Arsenal fan. Welcome to the show, Ziad. Hi, Wasim. Nice to be on the show finally. It's been a while, but uh, <laughs> I'm here now, so let's get going. <laughs> Basically, the reason for our episode is because a lot's been happening in terms of the world of football, um, and I'm not talking about Jose Mourinho leaving Tottenham. That's quite small news in terms of what's really happened in, in the global football world, um, because the European Super League has been launched or spoken about, and there's been letters going about, you know, confirming that certain clubs are committing to that. So um, just to kind of give you some sort of guide as to what's happened, there's been a, a, the launch of the Super League. There's 20 teams that's going to participate in it. There's 12 clubs who are going to be the founders of, of it. Six from the Premier League, three from La Liga and three from the Italian Serie A. Um, and they are going to form this league and have it based every year. And there will be five invited teams, so to speak, based on performance. But the 15 teams who are founder members, they'll be there every single season. So Ziad, what do you make of this and why do you think it's being formed? Look, I think it's been in the news for a while. You know, there's been talks about it happening and nothing materializes. And then suddenly over the weekend, it gets announced and there's a website and, and it seems pretty real. But uh, for me, it's still, I still don't see it. Um, I know everybody, obviously, there's been a lot of passionate fans out on social media and so on who have been going against it, all the pundits um, in the media as well. But it, it still seems like way off for me. So I, I'm not too sure. I mean, I think it's a novel idea and I'm not too surprised, to be honest, because of the ownership that's involved. You know, it's a lot of American owners and myself being a, a fan of American sports, I know how they set up and formats are. So like, for example, no promotion relegation, that's a big thing for them to, to you know, have the team in the competition every season. So it is a bit of a shock in terms of the way it was announced, but the writing's been on the wall for a couple of years now. You mentioned the American style. I, th I think that JP Morgan is going to fund it, um, an American-based um, investment group. So, so do you see that exactly being about um, having this big pot of money that JP Morgan is going to put into the Super League and, and the teams basically seeing it as guaranteed income over a, a number of years and that being the main aspect as to why they're doing this? Or do you think it's because the Champions League has become a bit stale? What do you, what do you make of that? I, de I don't think the Champions League is stale in any way. Look, <laughs> as an Arsenal fan, we haven't been in the Champions League for, for a number of years. So uh, I don't know if I can talk too much about that. But I think just in general, the, the likes, obviously the English Premier League has become way more competitive. So the top four spots are, are, you know, hard to get into. And you've seen teams like Manchester United being out of the Champions League, Liverpool, Chelsea have missed it, Arsenal too, Spurs have been in and out. So there's no guarantee anymore. And I think as an owner of those teams, they want that guarantee, which they have. I mean, Manchester United's owner owns the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Arsenal's owner owns, I think it's the Los Angeles Rams, as well as a basketball team. Denver Nuggets, and they know what they're getting themselves into every year. It's the same thing. So I think that's where these owners are, are coming from, is that they want that, like you say, that guaranteed pot of money every season. Look, they're not saying that they don't want to play in the domestic stuff and, and completely break away. They just want this one tournament that they can call their own, and they can keep all the money and distribute it as they see fit. But that begs the question. Um, we've often heard coaches saying there's too many games, there's too many games, there's Champions League, there's Europa, there's um, Premier League, Carabao Cup, um, FA Cup. So now on top of that, we're going to put more games in the European Super League. Um, so do you th see it as, as being like a feasible option in terms of all the games that's going to be played? If you're going to be playing Premier League um, on the weekend, you're going to be playing Super League the, the weekdays. Yeah, my understanding is that it will just basically be a competitor to the Champions League. Um, I don't know how it is a direct comp competitor because it's not using all the champions per se, only some of those teams. I mean, the, the 12 teams that are, are on the record, six are from England, three are from Italy and three are from Spain. I mean, that's not a true reflection of champions. 
you know. Um, exactly. But with that being said, if they don't participate in the Champions League and they're just playing this midweek, then I don't think it will affect the schedule too much. But, I mean, you can imagine the can of worms that it opens when fixtures have to be rescheduled or there's um, a Premier League fixture that must be moved to accommodate it or a FA Cup fixture or whatever the case is. It can get seriously uh, uh, confusing for, for fans, especially with regards to the schedule. I think also if you... Um, the, the thing that, that really irks me about this tournament... Um, and I suppose we are on different sides of the story in, in that Arsenal could be in this European Super League, Newcastle would be out of the Super League based on, you know, the history and performances. But what irks me about this competition or this Super League is that teams will be able to be in the competition every year regardless of their performance. And that, for me, is, takes away the true meaning of sport because sport is a competitive thing where, you know, on the given day, anyone can beat anyone. And, you know, if you, I think that is what, what really um, made me fall in love with sport is that I watch every single weekend, uh, be it cricket, rugby or soccer, um, or football in this case, um, because you just don't know what's going to happen. So you watch because, you know, you're intrigued. Is, is there going to be a surprise? Is the underdog going to perform? And in this competition, you're just not going to have that. So I feel that that although, yes, we, we would like to see the big names play each other, you know, more regularly, Manchester United versus Barcelona, that would be a glamour tie. Uh, Real Madrid versus Liverpool. Uh, we saw it now in the Champions League after a long time, um, or at least for a knockout game. So I, for me, that competitive nature needs to be there and that um, we're going to get tired of just watching the big games all the time, every year, because it's going to be consumed so much. So... So what do you make of that, that aspect of this um, tournament? Yeah, I agree with you. I think there, there's a possibility that there could be viewer fatigue, you know, like you look forward to that draw. And if, like you're saying, as a Newcastle supporter, if you're in that draw and you get drawn against Manchester United or City or whatever the case is, it's exciting for you in one way because it's a big tie. And with this proposed Super League, you're going to see that every year. So you could get, I don't know if board's the right word, but you could get overexposed, you know. But at the same time, we, uh, I'm playing a bit of devil's advocate here. But if you look at a league, let's take cricket, for example, and the IPL, every year it's the same teams. The teams don't change. You can't get relegated. You can't get promoted. You play each team twice. And every year we watch it, right? Like I watch, I follow it quite closely. I'm sure you do as well. And that's, I think that's the model that they're looking at. And Okay, I follow American sport as well. So if I take um, basketball, it's the same teams every year. The teams don't change. But what does change and contribute to the competitive nature is that each team has like a cycle over five or six years where they compete, they contenders for the title, then they have to reset and reload again, kind of develop and, and rebuild the squad to compete again at the later stage. Very few squads can compete consistently. So there is that competitive nature within it. It's just not the traditional model that we used to, where any team can qualify, any team can get knocked out, any team can get promoted or relegated, which is kind of the traditional model and what we all used to. And that's what the history is based on, you know? Whereas when it's something new and you're creating history, it, it's completely different. So if I go back to the IPL example, for it to work, like the IPL was created with eight new teams, that had no history. So they started from ground zero and then you, you know, they created history and you started following the team you like and so on. I think the problem here is that these owners and club presidents have taken teams who have hundreds of years of history that mean something to people and are now trying to do something and, and break away with teams who are embedded within that culture, if that makes sense. You know, like if you from... Um, Merseyside and you grew up supporting Liverpool, the clubs down the road from you. It's a bit different to a new IPL team that was created or an expansion franchise, you know? So I think that's where they're missing a beat completely is that they're ignoring the fan who, who, who the history of that club means something to. And exactly. And I think a key point that you mentioned with regards to the, the IPL and the model that it follows there. The IPL is, is successful largely because 
each team has the same amount that they can spend on players and squads. And that keeps the, the IPL competitive because now, you know, certain teams can't run away with it every year because they've just got more money and so on. So I think I don't see that happening with the Super League because the, the Super League already stated that the founder members will, will have a bigger stake in it. And those other teams will, will, will join the competition basically as, uh, you know, good performances that they've put in and they join the competition for, let's say, the one season. They might only get a, a lower percentage, you know, for participating, but because they're not a founder member, they'll get less. Therefore, there's already going to be, a, you know, a gap in terms of money available to the one compared to the other. So therefore, you know, in all likelihood, the, the, the new team would then be lower in the table because they just have less to spend. Um, and as we've seen in the Premier League, the top six or the big six, generally by the end of the season, they're close to, you know, being in the top six because they've got so much money. So I think... Yeah. In terms of the, the, the model that it follows, that's going to be important to see if it's going to be a success or not, because if it's going to be the IPL model, it could work. But if it's going to be, as you said, the, the American model, um, then it might not be as competitive. So I think that is something that we still probably need to see more information on before we can you know, make that call. Yeah. But, um, the, the one thing you mentioned there was fans. And I think fans... Generally, because these owners are so wealthy, they just ignore the fans and what they what they think, you know. But there's been a huge uproar from all fans, fans of the teams involved and fans of the teams that's not involved, like myself. So I feel that to, are they are they going to take the fans into consideration at this at the uh, at the stage where um, they feel like well, well, we need to now the the backlash has been so big, we need to take a back back step, or do you feel they're just going to ignore the fans um, outright? I, I really don't know. Eh? I, I, I think that these, these owners, and when I say the owners, I, I refer more to the English ones because the, I don't know too much about the Spanish and the Italian ones, but the, the, the Premier League team owners, a lot of them come from you know, a, a background where they've been quite successful and that's how they've made their money. So for me, I think that the league will happen in some way. I'm just not sure what it is. And the thing that they need is fans. And there's a big debate at the moment about the fans, the local fans and the fans that are based abroad. So as a fan based abroad, for example, I haven't seen Arsenal play Juventus or Real Madrid in a long time. So if this does take place, there is a chance that I, I might actually watch it because I haven't seen my team play against those teams in a long time. And, you know, I'm a bit detached from what's happening on the ground and I'm not going to the stadium, but a season ticket holder might feel completely different and they have every right, obviously. So I, I really don't know if, if these owners will take note, but I know that the fans are going to make their voices heard. And I think what will really tip the scales uh, one way or the other is the reaction of the players. So yes, some players have come out and, and made statements, but Okay, James Milner, yes, he's a, a Liverpool legend, but he played for City also for a number of years and other clubs. He doesn't carry the same weight as a Neymar or a um, Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi coming out and saying we fall against this. Paul Pogba, those, that level of players, Virgil van Dijk, if they can come out and say where they stand, then things will become more apparent. And I think that that's a very good point. And I, I think... At the moment, the, the players are very cautious in, in what they can and ca can't say because of the contract situation and things like that. So it's, it's going to be interesting with time as things develop, what they uh, come out and say. Um, but I think also a good point that you mentioned, or another factor that we need to mention, is the fact that UEFA and the Premier League and La Liga and Serie A, what are they going to do? Um, because do they say to the big six um, or the teams involved, look, you, you're turning your back on us, you want to go and create your Super League, um, therefore we're going to kick you out, that's it, you know? Or are they going to try and work with them in trying to make this happen in terms of there can be a Premier League as well as a Super League and that the rest is your AFIS problem? Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what those, those institutions do. But what, what would you do if you were in this room? Man, to be honest, I think all these guys are, are after the money in some way or the other. If you ever lose these 12 to 15 teams, it weakens their product of the Champions League. If FIFA lose these players to international competitions, it weakens their product. 
Um, there's the Club World Cup also, which FIFA have been trying to promote and make into a bigger event where a tournament like this could also affect that. So I think they're all going to try and get in a room and negotiate something that works for everybody at the end of the day. Right now, obviously, it's quite emotional and uh, there's a lot of personal relationships that have been um, brought to the light, you know, like between Juventus president and the UEFA president, who they were apparently quite close and then he didn't even know this was taking place right under his nose. So <laughs> from, from that perspective, I think all the, the bodies have to, to play ball at some point, man. And like you were saying, there's the FA, there's the league, there's all these different bodies. There's FIFPRO who represent the players. There, there's just tons of, of moving parts here and there's different countries. So which law do you follow, you know? I believe that the, the league will be created in Spain and the company will be hosted in, in Spain. So will it, you know, be have to abide by the laws in Spain? How does it all work? And I think that's what has to still come to light. And, and once that, those details come out, then things will become clearer because as an international player, for example, if you ever say you can't play for England, say you're Harry Kane, you can't play for England if you play in the Super League. You choose not to play in the Super League, but now you have to leave Tottenham. So do you, do you have to sign for another club? How does that work? Is there a transfer fee? Do you sign as a free agent? Um, there's all these things to be considered, especially if, if you get kicked out of your domestic league, for example, which I personally think is the most extreme. It doesn't make sense to kick someone out of the league because they're choosing to play in another continental cup. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just messy. Like, how do the players move? They haven't obviously had any say in it. They still have to be, be um, what's the right word? They still have to be consulted to get their opinions. But what do you do if you're Harry Kane? You know, do you move? Do you want to play Euros because you're in your prime? But then on the flip side, for Arsenal, for example, Lacazette hasn't played for France for five years. So if you tell him you can't play for France again, you just shrug your shoulders. It's like, okay, cool. I'm not playing for France anyway. So I might as well just continue and play in this. So everybody will have their own preference, but ultimately it's the stars. If the stars don't go along with it, then they, they won't have a strong product. But if the stars leave, then you either don't have a strong product. And that's the real battle, I believe. Yeah, I totally agree. I think this is going to come down to the Super League versus your AFA Champions League. And one of them is going to have to stand firm and the other one is going to probably fall. But it's going to be interesting to see which one of the two wins. But um, I've got two more questions for you. The first question is, as an Arsenal fan, are you for the Super League or are you against it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, like, I, I don't think it's a, a great idea, to be honest, because... Just the additional model of having to qualify, it means something to be in the top four and to play in that, in that tournament. And if you're not there, there's a reason. You know, you're not good enough for whatever the case is. So from that perspective, definitely against it. But if it does go ahead and, and Arsenal are in it in some way, I don't think I'll know until that first fixture if I'm actually for or against and who actually lines up as the players. You know, if it's a proper team, full-strength teams against one another, or is it going to be only renegades who got nothing to lose and are just mercenaries happy to play wherever they can. So right now, I think it's too early to make a decision because are they going to ban them from international football? Are they not? And all those uh, components, once it all becomes clear and the format is, is decided upon and so on, I think I'll be, I'll be able to say, but for now, I'm pretty much on the fence. Fair enough. Um, last question. Uh, what's your gut feel? Do you see this tournament eventually happening or do you still see it as something that will be stopped eventually? I think, like I said earlier, the, the guys behind the scenes are guys that don't lose. Traditionally, they've, they've won at everything they've done. That's how they made their money and were able to buy multiple sports clubs and, and so on. So I think they win in some way, in some form, but I don't think it's going to happen the way they've announced it right now. Because already you see teams getting cold feet. Um, they're not as confident, you know, like a, a PSG who want to probably be in the mix, but they have the World Cup and have good ties with UEFA and they've got the whole angle where they own the rights, be in sports. It's the same guy who owns be in sports that runs PSG. So there's a lot, a lot of things in there. Uh, and Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, all those clubs, would they want to be left out? 
I don't know, you know, and they're all saying that they don't want to be in it, they oppose it. But in the long run, I don't know if they really will. So I think this league will take place in some form, but not the current form. Because like you're saying, how do they decide the five teams that come in and out every year? Is it just who, who's friendly with you this week or <laughs> who pays the most for the slot or, or how does it work? And when that all gets cleared up, I think uh, it happens in some way. It might not be the way they want it. When I say they, I mean the, the owners. It might be that it becomes some sort of tournament where they have to create completely separate squads, which I think would be the winner ultimately, where if you really want to go all in on, on the American model, you'd need to get, like the IPL also, for example, a whole list of players that sign up. The tournament takes place over six weeks and you get drafted to whichever team and that model would be something a bit more interesting. Brand new teams, you go according to cities and you create something completely new, but you leave the historical clubs where they are. I, I don't think it's a good idea to move them. But at the end of the day, these guys paid money for these clubs. The FA agreed to sell it to them. Whoever owned the club before agreed to sell. And now we're sitting with this mess. See, that we can talk for hours and hours <laughs> on the subject. So I think we're going to leave it there. But um, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. And also, um, where can the guys find you on, on the socials before we, we let you go? Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure, man. I, I've been really excited to come on here for a while. So I'm glad that this thing happened and we managed to to able to chat about it. Um, at the moment, uh, just uh, running the, the website is called sportycast.com. So I put up a blog pretty much every week with just some, you know, quick... Uh, pointers on, on what's happening in world sport like I said I like my American sports mm-hmm. so there's quite a bit of baseball basketball in there um, and then at the moment with the IPL on uh, we're doing a show just looking back at you know maybe four or five days of the tournament that goes up on YouTube and on Twitter Instagram so just sporty cost S-P-O-R-T-Y-C-A-S-T and yeah you can get all our content from there and guys um, if you are still watching, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, um, All Things Football, and be sure to to catch many more episodes with, with some great guests lined up in the future as well. So from, from me, Wasim and Ziad, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys.